Hey everybody, this is my TNA Impact on Pop Impact Wrestling review for March 1st, 2016. Crazy that somehow it's already March 1st. Two months are gone already in 2016. Time really flies when you get over 30 years old, trust me. So, Impact on Pop. Review for March 1st kicked off with Bobby Roode's music hitting. Bobby Roode comes out of Beer or Beer Money's music hitting. Bobby Roode comes out and they say he's in the ring ready to face Kurt Angle for Kurt Angle's farewell tour. This was one of the second to last match of Kurt Angle's farewell tour. It was on a, it was a hashtag on Twitter. I don't know if it trended or not, but it was a hashtag. Thank you, Kurt. I tweeted it many times because I love Kurt Angle. I respect the hell out of Kurt Angle. He was one of my all-time favorite wrestlers to watch in the ring. Kurt Angle, even at 45, 46 years old, I think. Even at that age, Kurt Angle is still very, very good and is still in his prime, in my opinion. The man is a wrestling machine. He's a legend. He's a Hall, TNA Hall of Famer. He's a former TNA World Champion, WWE World Champion, World Heavyweight Champion, Intercontinental Champion, European Champion. The guy's done it all in pro wrestling. Kurt Angle had a great career in the WWE and has had a very good career in TNA. He's been in TNA longer than he has in the WWE. So, thank you, Kurt, one more time. Thank you, Kurt. You, it has been a pleasure and an honor to watch you wrestle in the ring for so many years. And I was glad and very happy I got to see Kurt Angle wrestle live. A couple times before he left WWE. I saw him wrestle a few times on pay-per-views and Raws that I went to live. So, Bobby Roode was in the ring. Kurt Angle comes out. They start their match. It was an opening match. The kickoff to Impact on Pop. It was very good. Next week, Kurt Angle is in his final TNA match against Bobby Lashley. Kurt Angle, this, as I said, Kurt Angle, Bobby Roode have great chemistry. They work very, very good together, very well together. They put on great matches always because they're both very good wrestlers. They're very good. I wish uh, maybe in a couple years, Bobby Roode, maybe he'll go to WWE. I would love to see that because the guy is very good. So... Uh, first, we had Bobby Roode hit, a, or Kurt Angle hit an angle slam on Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode kicked out. I was surprised by that. A good, nice kick out, kick out by Bobby Roode after the angle slam. Then, Bobby Roode hit the Roode bomb. Kurt Angle kicks out. Great fight, great heart shown by Kurt Angle, the Olympic gold medalist, who we all know broke his... Uh, bro won an Olympic gold medal with a broken freaking neck. Kurt Angle, Bobby Roode was very good, very entertaining. I'm a fan of both of these guys. As I said, I respect the hell out of Kurt Angle for what a great career he has had. The guy has put his body on the line over and over, year after year. He's had like three or four neck surgeries, and the guy continues to wrestle for us wrestling fans so if you don't respect Kurt Angle and if you didn't thank him on Twitter or if you never uh, respected Kurt Angle F you is what I have to say so after the rude bomb Kurt Angle kicks out locks on the ankle lock and he's not letting it go Bobby Roode moves flips out of the ankle lock but Kurt Angle still has it locked on Bobby Roode has to tap out Kurt Angle gets the win. It was a very good match. Then after it, James Storm and his music, Beer Money Hits, he comes down, 
hands of Kurt Angle, I think a beer at first, but Kurt Angle wanted milk. So he toasts, and they do cheers. Beer Money does cheers in the ring, and Kurt Angle drinks his milk. milk mania was running wild. It was pretty awesome. So a very good end to that match. They see Beer Money and Bobby Roode get on the microphone after the match and give Kurt Angle a lot of respect. And Bobby Roode even sent out a tweet saying thank you, Kurt Angle, for all the great matches that he could wrestle Kurt over and over and over. Up next, we had, after the celebration, we had Beer Money called out the Wolves. Or Kurt Angle said, I want to see the Wolves against Beer Money. So the Wolves come out, face off with Beer Money. They tease that they're going to have a World Tag Team title match next week. The Wolves versus Beer Money. Here's some news. Maybe you don't know it, but Davey Richards suffered a torn ACL. And I think torn MCL, his knees really messed up. So Davey Richards will be out of action for six to nine months. That really sucks for the Wolves as a team. It really sucks for TNA because Davey Richards is a hell of a talent. The guy is very good. So it really sucks. Davey Richards is going to be out of action for a couple months. That's not good. But injuries always happen in wrestling. But get well very, very soon. Davey Richards, I wish you a speedy recovery. And that you're back better than ever. So the Wolves will take on Beer Money next week for the World Tag Team titles. For the TNA Tag Titles. Up next we had Rockstar Spud come out. And not even really talk. After Rockstar Spud came out, Matt Hardy had to come out. With his wife and probably with Tigress. I don't remember if Tigress was in the ring or not. So Matt Hardy gets on the mic, talks a lot. Rockstar Spud talks a little bit. Matt Hardy tries to bury EC3, which you can't really bury the guy because he's a superstar in my opinion. And he is a future of TNA and TNA better give him another world title reign in 2016. That's all I got to say. And not have him lose it for a very long time. So, in my opinion, TNA should put all they got, everything into EC3 as their future. Hopefully the guy is signed through two more years in the company. So, Hardy tries to bury EC3. He says he beat his ass in EC3. That he's done with EC3. And EC3 will no longer get any more TNA World Title shots. I don't, I'm sure he will probably by the summer Slammiversary pay-per-view. I could see EC3 versus Hardy one more time for the world title. I don't know if Matt is going to hold the title until Slammiversary in June, but my guess is he will. Because I don't see anybody else beating or really, well, maybe his brother Jeff. Maybe that could happen, but... Other than Jeff Hardy, there is no one else to be the world champion, in my opinion, except EC3. So he should be the next guy to get the title after Hardy, even though EC3 lost it to Hardy. But he kind of got screwed. So, because Tigris, as we all know, in January, Tigris turned on EC3 and Matt Hardy won the world title on Impact on Pop. I believe their first episode on Pop. So... Up next, EC3 comes out after Matt Hardy, Spud were in the ring cutting the promo. EC3 comes out with a steel chair. And then that segment ends. I believe, and then EC3 is in the ring and he challenges Rockstar Spud to a match. Not to a wrestling match, but a fight. Just a, like no DQ, anything goes street fight. And Spud doesn't really accept but later on, Dixie Carter tells Spud she's done with Matt Hardy trying to run things. And Dixie said she has washed her hands with the entire situation. So Spud is forced, basically, to face EC3 in a fight to end the show. Up next, we had Gal Kim, the Knockouts champion, come out. 
the reigning knockouts champion. And some Twitter account is kind of stupid, but I'll mention it. I'm not going to say their name, but they're putting out a lot of uh, negative tweets, in my opinion, about TNA saying they Gal Kim is a champion when they have no longer have a women's division. If the person ever watches this, they'll know who they are. That's just stupid and stupidity. If you think TNA doesn't have any more divisions or maybe they don't. I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm just saying instead of bashing TNA on Twitter, just stop watching the show. If you're going to just bash it over and over on Twitter and try to make jokes. It's stupid. It's enough already and you're not funny. So up next, Gal Kim comes out, cuts a promo on Maria and says, Maria, basically get your ass out here. I trusted you and you were said you were going to be the future of the knockouts. Well, where are you, Maria? Come out. Maria comes out, cuts a pretty long promo, pretty good promo from Maria. She's a great heel. Maria is a way better heel than face. I never want to see Maria as a baby face because that did not work when she was a baby face in WWE. That was pretty lame. Maria is a baby face I did not enjoy. So, and I really hated when Maria was with Santino. That was awful. That was garbage. Anyways, Maria cuts a great promo, even mention, mentions Donald Trump, that she was on The Apprentice, she is a celebrity, she was on The Apprentice, and Donald Trump is a good friend of hers, or something like that, something about, she mentioned Trump, basically, to get heat, and the crowd started booing right away, even though the crowd was in England, they probably still don't like Trump in England. But a lot of people like him here because the guy's getting votes. But whatever. I won't be voting for Trump. That's for damn sure. Or that fuck Ted Cruz. Anyways, enough about politics. Um. So, what was, Maria brings up Trump, gets good heel heat. That's pretty damn funny. Crowd booed the hell out of it. And then, basically, Jade comes out of the dollhouse. Jade attacks. Gal Kim hits her with the belt. Takes a belt from Gal. Holds up the title right in Gal's face. Is standing over Gal Kim. Holding up the title. Jade gets on the mic and talks. I never really heard her talk before, but Jade can talk. And Jade is a damn good worker. I saw her in Shimmer, I think, a couple years ago. Two or three or four years ago. Jade is a very good women's wrestler. TNA should showcase her more. And let her show what she has to offer. Because she's damn talented. Is Jade. So Jade basically says on the mic. Gal I want this title. This title is mine. And I want to face you. So that segment ends. Up next we have... The Decay, a Decay short uh, video package on them, just showing them. It was pretty short, probably under a minute, but it was a very cool, very short video package on Decay. It was playing uh, Marilyn Manson music was playing in the background. I guess that's her new theme music. That's pretty good. It was a good fit for Decay to have some Marilyn Manson music. It fits their characters. And I'm starting to really like what they're doing with Decay. They're starting to push them. They're starting to showcase them more. And putting them in promos and video packages. It's good for Decay. And it's good for TNA to have a group like Decay around. So, uh, be quiet. So, I didn't shut somebody up in my house that started yelling up to my room so um that's why i said shut up just to let you all know so decay i'm i really like them as a group i think they can go far if tna keeps pushing them and putting them booking them right basically i like what i see so far from decay 
Then I'm next after the Decay short video Decay comes out and Abyss takes on Jimmy Havoc. Jimmy Havoc must have had a past with Rosemary because he said something to Rosemary last week on Impact. Jimmy Havoc, I think he's an indie wrestler from somewhere. UK or United States, I don't know. But he's probably a decent worker. Because I saw him in action tonight. He looked pretty good. So Jimmy Havoc went up to Rosemary and said she he knows that she still has feelings for him and whatever. Stuff like that. But Decay doesn't want Rosemary going around anybody or talking to anybody. So Abyss basically destroys Jimmy Havoc and gets a win. And that was only... After Kurt Angle defeated Bobby Roode, the second match was in for like at least 25-30 minutes later. Maybe 35 minutes later, Abyss defeated Jimmy Havoc. Up next, we had an EC3 promo backstage giving his thoughts on Rockstar Spud. And then we had Gal Kim. As I said, when uh, Gal Kim... I already talked about it, but when Maria got booed, almost booed out of the arena, it was pretty damn funny and pretty entertaining. So up next, we had the King of the Mountain Championship on the line. Yes, everybody, TNA still has the King of the Mountain Championship, and they're still letting EY defend it. Uh, they should have just kept the TV title around, but whatever. King of the Mountain has been a long time gimmick match in TNA's history, so I really got no problem with them having a King of the Mountain title. Eric Young is a champion, King of the Mountain champion. Eric Young with Bram defeats some guy, some wrestler, I don't know his name, I for, didn't write his name down. Some big, pretty huge guy, big, big guy. Kind of reminded me of Braun Strowman in WWE, but this guy, little, he had no shirt on, he was hairy as hell, he reminded me of George the Animal Steel, and it was uh, pretty frightening. Whoever the guy was facing EY, he was very, very uh, odd looking, I'll just say, very weird looking. Probably a wrestler from the United Kingdom, I don't know. But EY defeats him, of course he does, because he's not going to lose a King of the Mountain title to some guy getting a tryout on TNA. So EY is still the King of the Mountain champ. Up next, we had a promo from Drew. Drew Mackin, not McIntyre, Drew Galloway. I always call him Drew McIntyre. I think that is his WWE name, Drew um, whatever his name is, <laughs> Drew, not McIntyre, god damn it, Drew, whatever his name is, Drew, I forget his last name right now, but you know who he is, Drew did a promo about Michael Bennett, backstage is pretty good, setting up their match coming up, and then, next segment, Drew, not Mackin. God damn it, why can I remember his last fucking name? Whatever. Drew took on Michael Bennett next. Maria was at ringside. That's always a good thing when we get to look at Maria because she is hot as hell and gorgeous. So, Drew took on Michael Bennett. Michael Bennett gets his first victory in TNA Wrestling in his debut in the ring. Good for Michael Bennett. I tweeted him. He he liked one of my tweets tonight. So thank you, Michael Bennett. He's a good guy on Twitter. Cool guy to follow. So go follow real at real Mike Bennett. Go follow him. He's uh, good to his fans. They're good to wrestling fans. So first we had a cross face by Drew on uh, Michael Bennett. But Maria put... Mike Bennett's foot, her husband, she put his foot on the ropes. So Drew had to break the crossface. And then Michael Bennett rolled up Drew in a schoolboy. 
held the tights, one, two, three, got the victory by being a cheating heel. It was good for Michael Bennett to get his first victory. You can't, I mean, I'm glad Michael Bennett did not lose to Drew because that would have been stupid in his TNA wrestling debut in the ring. Up next, we had Matt Hardy backstage pumping up. Basically, Matt Hardy yelling, pumping up. Rockstar Spud yelling at him, finish him, and do it, do it, do it. And then up next, we had Kurt Angle, a video package with Kurt Angle's farewell tour. Highlights, footage of Kurt Angle versus Lashley in their first match. I think from January, from TNA's first episode on Pop, when Angle went up against Lashley in his farewell tour back in January. So we had highlights of that match, and then it was promoted, and they promoted Angle versus Lashley next week in Kurt Angle's final TNA match. That'll be very sad to see Kurt Angle in a TNA ring for the la for the last time, because. Kurt is not going to go back to TNA. I don't know what Kurt does. Maybe he'll go into MMA. I don't think he should. I think he should go back to WWE and accept an invitation into the Hall of Fame and or next year or this year. He should go back, wrestle, few matches, and then go into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Kurt really doesn't need to retire yet because I know he's beat up, but I don't think he needs to retire because he could probably still wrestle till he's 50 or over 50. So that was a good highlight package of Angle versus Lashley. Up next was the main event. EC3 taking on Rockstar Spud in an unsanctioned fight. Unsanctioned fight. This was basically anything goes, no rules, no holds barred. That's what unsanctioned means. So up next, it was main event time. I already said up next. Main event time, EC3 pretty much destroyed Rockstar Spud and beat the hell out of him. Did a lot of, threw him against the guardrail a lot of times. A lot of Irish whips and Spud went flying up against the steel guardrails. And Spud was getting the hell beat out of him. Then he got in a little bit of offense. Tiny bit of offense on EC3. EC3 in this match. I mean just watch EC3 in the ring. Watch what he does. The guy is so good. EC3 is. In my opinion. He's the franchise of TNA. And he should be booked like it. Because the EC3 is a fucking superstar. So, we Spud got in a tiny bit of offense. Uh, EC3 came back, got a table out from under the ring, put a table, set it up in the ring. Then Rockstar Spud hits a low blow on EC3. Knocks him down in the ring. But then EC3 gets up, fights his feet. And before the match, EC3 was attacked by Tigris, but he fought Tigris off and threw Mad Hardy and Tigris into a, a flatbed semi-truck and locked them in the truck. And then he went to the ring. So Spud basically was all alone and he was going to get killed. As I said, low blow was hit, but EC3 got back up, fought, fought his way back to his feet. And then Spud got power bombed through the table by EC3. That is pretty awesome. Crowd loved it. After the power bomb through the table, crowd was chanting one more time, one more time. Well, there wasn't another table around, so I don't know what they wanted uh, EC3 to do one more time, another power bomb. I don't know. EC3 picks up Spud. The match is over. EC3 already won, or just left Spud. But left Spud for dead, basically. Left him for dead. He couldn't get up. EC3 picks up Spud, locks on a million dollar dream. The submission would not let it go. Would not let it go. One ref came in, two refs came in, three refs came in, tried to break the million dollar dream. Spud was knocked, passed out, knocked out cold, wasn't moving. 
EC3 finally releases a hold and Spud is out cold. That ends impact on pop for tonight, for March 1st. I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was a very good, uh, very good show. It had a lot of good match, a uh, couple, one, two or three good matches. It was a very entertaining show, in my opinion. I would even say this impact on pop for March 1st, I would say it was better than last night's Raw. In my opinion, it was. It was more entertaining, and it was only two hours. So, hope you enjoyed my impact on Pop March 1st, 2016 review. Follow me on Twitter at TNAWWE Guy. You already know that if you follow me there. I'm also on Twitter at NXT WWE Guy. Hope you enjoyed my review. Watch my other videos. Like. Put, give me a thumbs up if you like some of my videos. Leave comments if you want to. Uh, if you don't, doesn't really matter to me. Anyways, hope you enjoy my review. I will do another Impact on Pop review for next week because it is Kurt Angle's final in-ring appearance in TNA Wrestling. Bye for now, everybody. <laughs>